we've been talking about dimensionality reduction approaches, and these are all about trying to construct low dimensional representations of samples that we've taken from high dimensional feature spaces. And in particular, we're trying to take advantage of the fact that these high dimensional feature spaces tend not to be occupied uniformly by the universe of possible samples that are out there. And in particular, they tend to form uh, clumps or clusters. They tend to form surfaces in, in, these, in this high dimensional space. And, and another term for this is this idea of uh, manifold. We've already played some with principal component analysis that tries to take advantage of linear relationships between features. But in general, uh, features that vary together do not tend to vary uh, in a linear manner. They might have some region where they vary linearly together. And you've seen lots of examples of this in your homework assignments. Um, but, uh, but the features can also have, uh, on top of a, a linear relationship, they, they might have another range of values where they vary uh, non-linearly uh, relative to one another. It's also the case that manifolds can loop back onto themselves. And what I mean by this is that the, the value of two features no longer has a one-to-one -one relationship. And we'll take a look at that uh, graphically next. All right, so let's draw a feature space here. So this might be x0 and x1. And we, we've already seen the, the linear kinds of uh, relationships. But we can, for example, have a, a situation where we have this linear relationship between the features. But uh, as x0 continues to get bigger, say x1 might do a downturn. So this, we, we've seen a few examples of, of this type of uh, shape before. And one can think of this as a, a one-dimensional a relationship between x0 and x1. So the manifold here, let me go ahead and draw that in. The manifold kind of sits along uh, along here. And if we were to take any one of these uh, points and project it to the closest point on the manifold, we'd actually not lose much information. And so this is a, a real opportunity for, for us to collapse these two dimensions down onto one dimension. Something else that has happened in this particular manifold is that we no longer have a one-to-one -one relationship between x0 and x1. So, so in particular, if we look at uh, a value of x1 right here, if I draw uh, a line across here, we've got two different places, or maybe even three different places, where we cross the the, the uh, manifold. So we have this point here, and this point here, and this point over here. And, and this is a, a scenario that we actually want to be able to uh, capture as well in our, in, in our representations. In particular, we really want to be able to capture the, the fact that there's some local variance right, right here between x0 and x1. But for, for a value of x1, there is another place where there is another relationship between x0 and x1, which is over here, and then potentially another one sitting out over here. A more extreme case, let's draw that out, might look something like this. So again, x0 and x1. And in the, the book, certainly, talks about this type of a shape as well, but we can have a manifold that sort of loops, literally loops back onto itself. So, so again, uh, here we can draw in a, a manifold, a one dimensional manifold, and then project all of the points in the feature space onto this, uh, onto this manifold. And, and what we get out of this is that we can uh, now express any one of these points in terms of a coordinate on the the reduced manifold, which is a one degree of freedom uh, manifold. Let's go ahead and draw that out. So here's another axis. We'll call we'll address this as y y zero, and say this this point right here uh, projects onto projects onto the manifold at this point. 
And so the corresponding point uh, sits over here in this new space. And, and likewise, this point here projects onto the point here, uh, onto the manifold there, and, and has a, a coordinate uh, on this one dimensional, in this one dimensional space at that location. And we can continue on from there. So there's a gap and then a couple more points, uh, another, another point, another point, and then a cluster of a few points, et cetera. And by the time we get out over to the points here, they, they live out on the other end of this one dimensional uh, system. Part of the job in building our models is to figure out where these manifolds are. And then in some sense, we're gonna build a model that allows us to unwind this manifold into a linear space. One of the things that we're going to get out of this is that at, at this point, we can start to apply some of our other uh, methods of uh, doing regression or classification. And, and in particular, take advantage of the fact that the points, uh, even though the, the points here and the points here are very similar to one another in the original feature space, in this modified feature space, they, they live here and they, they live out in this, in this area over here. And so they're quite a, a distance from one another. The final point I'd like to make about this is that our one-to-one -one relationship definitely does not exist here. So if I draw for, for one particular value of X zero, there are three different reasonable values for X one, but the, this range of values for X1 are not reasonable, and likewise here and, and likewise out here. So, so we'd like our representations to be able to acknowledge uh, this, uh, really this many-to-many -many type of a relationship now between values in X1 and values in X0. So you've already learned about PCA and kernel PCA. PCA, as you know, only addresses linear manifolds. And, and in doing so, we construct a, a global model of the manifold. So we explicitly represent that linear surface that the manifold lives on. Um, with kernel PCA, we can express nonlinearities. And there are really two different types of cases here. And, and these are the same cases that we saw when we were looking, say, at regression and kernel regression. In the, uh, in the simple case, uh, we took the step of taking our input features, doing a nonlinear expansion of those features into a much bigger feature space, and then kind of creating a linear model as a function of that bigger uh, feature space. And in this type of an approach, whether we're talking about regression or we're talking about this manifold representation here, these are global models in that they cover the entire space. In this case, it's the expanded space. However, as, as we saw in support vector machines and support vector regressions, when we apply the kernel trick, we can actually represent our regression model or our classification model in terms of a weighted sum over all of the samples in our training set. And as it turns out, we can take this idea uh, into other domains as, as well. With this next approach with local linear embedding, we can actually express the, the manifold uh, not as a global function, but in terms of what's happening locally to a, a set of samples. So the locally linear embedding uh, approach, the outline uh, looks like this. As we've already been discussing, we, we start in an n-dimensional feature space. And then we go about measuring the distance between each pair of points in the training set. For each sample then, we identify the closest neighbors based on this distance measure. And usually we're working with a Euclidean distance measure there. And then we can get a sense of what the local shape of the manifold uh, looks like based on that one sample and the distribution of, uh, of its immediate neighbors. And in particular with local linear embedding, what we're going to end up doing is building a model of an individual uh, sample as a weighted average of its immediate neighbors. And we'll talk through the, the details of that in a, in a few minutes. The next step after we've constructed these local models 
is to introduce yet another embedded space. And this is a smaller dimensional space. It's M dimensional, where M is a lot smaller than N. What we're going to do is take every point in the training set, it has a corresponding point within this lower dimensional space. We can place these points anywhere that we want, but the constraint is that we have to place them such that they respect the, uh, the local geometry. So, so a point in this new space has to be near in the same way to its immediate neighbors in the original space. All right, so that's the, the outline of the uh, approach, and now it's time to look at uh, some of the mathematics.